Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, I wanted to run you guys through um, some stuff on my AR. Uh, you know, I'm not really a gun guy in that I like to collect guns, I have tons of guns, whatever. Every gun I have is a working gun. You know, it's a gun that has a purpose. There's a couple of collectors, like that 1903 uh, hammerless that I have that are like family heirlooms, but for the most part, everything I have has a purpose. And you know, if it's either hunting or in this case, um, the only purpose for my AR is self-defense. You know, you could hunt coyote with it or you could, you know, hunt hogs with it. I don't know if a 223 will get it done on a hog or not. You guys know better than me. I'm not really a big hunter, but kind of give you the rundown. This this I set up, I do I do a lot of training. I take various uh, classes and uh, we sometimes we'll do carbine and carbine pistol class. Um, and guys show up with, with just bizarre stuff. You know, I know, I know guys build their own rifles and I'm, I try not to judge. Uh, it's not for me. I've built a couple, you know, it's fun. It's something to do, uh, but it's not really something that I personally uh, would bet my life on. And that's honestly from going to various training classes and watching what works and what, how guys run their guns. And, um, you know, the, there's a certain level of gun that just seems to run like a sewing machine. You know, where, where you get out there, you get in the dirt, you get in the ground. You can see this gun isn't even clean. I mean, I got mud and dirt from the last class on it. Um, but it's a mil-spec Daniel Defense. Um, it is it is their DDM4 V5 uh, lightweight. So it's got the lightweight profile barrel. Uh, and that was the philosophy I kind of wanted with this. Even though uh, the reality is I'm not going to be hoofing through the mountains of Afghanistan. Boy, these things get up heavy quick. And... Um, I've had a couple different configurations on it, and this is kind of the best weight to performance setup that I have found for me. Uh, you know, your mileage may vary. This is what I do. Uh, this is the way I prefer to set up my gun, um, and this is what works for me. And so far, I have yet to have a failure um, at a class, which says a lot because you're laying in the dirt, you're laying in the dust. I mean, this thing will be filthy dirty at the end of a class, and you know, I'll wipe it off and hit it with you know some gun oil and. We rock and roll and we keep uh, moving on. Um, I think right now I'm using Slip 2000 on it and, uh, you know, just regular bore cleaner to clean it when I clean it, which is not very often. I don't think I've, I don't think I've cleaned it in two years. I just keep it wet. Um, I think I wiped down the bolt in the chamber and stuff last time and I might have bore snaked it. Um, and I, you know, I oiled the heck out of it. So uh, that's pretty much the extent of the cleaning I've done. I consider this a work gun and something I just use for, for class. So let me run you through it. So anyway, like I said, it started off as a DDM 4V5 LW. Uh, I did make one mistake when I purchased this rifle, and that is it has the, it's either the 12 or the 13, I think it's the 12 inch uh, four end. I should have got the 15 that comes out to here, and I'll, and I'll explain to you the, the importance of that here in a second. Uh, it's something I didn't realize whenever I bought it. Um, hey, whatever, you know, you live and you learn, and it's not the end of the world. And one day, when I feel like spending three or 400 bucks on a nice front rail, uh, I'll change it. But in the meantime, this is what I run. Um, I, I, I did a LaRue furniture kit uh, and I changed out some things. So I run the LaRue grip. I really like its texture. It's very close to like the MMP 2.0 texture. Um, I really like that a lot. And I had a LaRue uh, matched uh, stock on it. And we were at a class and I swapped out with, with actually my instructor has this Magpul uh, STR. And I like this one a lot better. If I get a better cheek weld, it just kind of feels more natural. And he liked the LaRue, so we swapped. Um, so that's fine. Uh, you know, you know, it's whatever. I don't really care about this stuff. It's literally whatever just gives you a good feel on the gun. Um, that, that stuff doesn't really matter. You know, there's some guys like even the stock A2 grip and that's fine. I just felt with gloves, I couldn't really get my fingers in there because we run gloves when we run these, uh, these classes and I, I didn't like the way it felt. Um, standard GI trigger, mil spec, nothing, nothing fancy there. I run GI aluminum mags. I do have some Magpul stuff, but I've uh, started switching back over to the aluminum GI. They hold up, they last, um, they seem to be, you know, there's guys running 20, 30 year old mags, they work great. Um, moving up to the front, I run the stock Daniel Defense uh, vertical grip, and I didn't run this for a long time. Uh, I was dealing without it, dealing without it, dealing without it, and then last class I, I kind of broke down and put it back on, and um, you don't, when you, when you grip the rifle, you know, when we're shooting, we're not holding it like this, you're actually holding it. I don't know how well that shows up on camera with everything in front um, and all you're doing is you're seating the rifle into your shoulder um, and you're using it to drive the gun and some guys use a 45 I tried one of those I didn't really like it um, I have LaRue thumb 
or and finger gra finger grabs. I've tried those; they're okay. I didn't mind those too much, but I just got a little bit of purchase with this. Um, we'll see if I break it. Uh, I haven't I haven't read any reviews either way. It seems to be stout. It's ugly, but it seems to be pretty stout. Uh, moving forward, we do low light stuff. So uh, I've got a Haley Strategic forward mount. So this is when I was talking about the, the 12 inch being a mistake and I should have gone to the 15. I would have been able to run a LaRue mount up front and mounted this light exactly how I wanted it uh, without needing this. Now the Haley Strategic is pretty cool. It, it cuts right down into the, into the uh, fore end and it actually moves your light forward so I can mount my light a little bit further forward. And that made sense because I was running out of real estate up front here um, and uh, being, able, be, being able to get to that. Um, this is a Surefire P3X Fury. Uh, it's a thousand lumens, reaches out really well. Super happy with the light, it's held, holding up great. Um, you know, being that's on, on the front of an AR, it gets gets beat up pretty, pretty bad. Um, the Haley Strategic ugh, mount will do the Streamlight as well. Um, however, I just don't really trust this as something I would run on the front of my AR. It'd probably be fine, um, you know, it's a third of the price of the of the P3X. Although the P3X was on sale for $100, um, which is a heck of a deal. And these are, I think, 80 or 90 bucks. Usually this is closer to 250. Um, I don't know. I really wanted to build something that I knew would just take a beating. And there's nothing worse than being at class and having equipment failure. Now, I mean, if that's that bad at class, imagine what that's like in a real fight. Um, so that's kind of the moving forward. You get to the optics and the sighting system. And I personally, I made some mistakes here. Uh, these are Troy uh, tritium flip-ups. That was not a mistake. Um, I went for the dioptic. I'm not sure how well I can show this. All right. I hate the fact that I'm muzzling my leg, but the rifle is clear. All right, so you can kind of see it's, uh, you know, you get the, the goofy triangle shaped dioptic and then that has the, uh, this guy too, which is like the little, almost like two little finger claws. I really wish I'd have just done the traditional rear peep sight style, you know, with the with the with just just something a little more. I don't know. I I, I never really have been that wild about these. They're fine. Um, they're good enough. I mean, they're tritium iron backup sights. They're they're kind of probably overkill. Um, you know, I've never needed them, and but they're there. If I need them, they're sighted in at uh, 50 yards. I think they're 50 yards. I have to check. I've got everything written down to keep it all straight. Uh, and then lastly, I have the uh, Trijicon MRO, which the only reason I have a Trijicon MRO is because it was cheaper than the Aimpoint T1 and T2. It, and that is on a LaRue mount, which is fantastic. LaRue mount, I mean, that's that's kind of a no-brainer. You know, you, you the optic, you kind of pick the one that works for you that you can afford. LaRue mount, to me, is almost a, uh, a gotta-have. You know, they guarantee back to zero. It's super stout. Uh, you're never going to move it. The MRO, some guys complained about fisheye, some guys complained about the glass color. I, I didn't have any problem with it. To be honest with you, I didn't even notice it. I mean, it's a red dot. You put it on what I want to hit, and then you, you do what you got to do. Um, before this, I had an Aimpoint Pro on it, and that was getting back kind of to the weight. Um, and as it's set up, this is right around 9 pounds without a mag, and it's still on the porky side, if you ask me. But with, you know, with everything I've done, I was just trying to keep it light. You know, the, the light adds weight and the light adds weight out front. And, uh, you know, this just kind of was trying to help make up for that, even though this is kind of centered and balanced. Uh, the, the rifle's fairly well balanced. Uh, you know, you take the light off and it does, it does lighten the load quite a bit. Uh, there's no doubt about it. But, like I said, I'm not carrying this through the mountains of Afghanistan. Oh, um, I run a, uh, this is a Vickers sling. Uh, so, you know, two point, nothing to it. You know, Blue Force gear, I think sells them BOGO for 50 bucks all the time. Uh, and you know, they're normally 50 or 60 bucks. It just works. It, it, there's no BS. Uh, I wonder if there's a model on it. I don't think there is. It's just, it's just a no frills. You know, I tried running a padded sling once and it just gets in your way. This, this just, this thing rock and rolls. You know, you can adjust quickly. It just, it just, it just really was as a solid sling. All the instructors I know run a, a version of this or something similar. So made sense to me. 
And um, so that's kind of my setup on my AR. It's what works for me. Last class we went to, there were guys with some home builds and some suppressed stuff and some, I mean, I have no problem with that stuff. That's fine. Um, you know, they're where it breaks eating lunch and mine's sitting there in the corner cooling off and I never touched it. And they're oiling and tearing apart and field stripping. And I, I didn't crack this rifle open once that whole class. And I got home, I think I wiped off the bolt and maybe wiped out some stuff, hit it with some oil and, uh, you know, that's pretty much it. But uh, I even run, and I am going to eventually change out my uh, charging handle. Right now I just run the standard mil spec charging handle. Um, gets a little bit tight with, you know, trying to run it with one finger. Um, it's a little tight, so I'd like to get something a little bigger, but at the same time, it doesn't catch on my clothes. So uh, reloads and moving around and transitions from pistol to rifle, uh, you know, I've never had an issue with it. It's just not as comfortable as a... Um, as a uh, you know like a like a little nicer uh you know gunfighter style handle so i don't know eventually that'll probably get changed out and uh, from what i understand the the roll pin in this is the weak link so i don't want that to break and um but i'm not going to do anything huge in the back and i'm not going to do anything ambi i don't need it um you know the reality is it, it and that's and that's pretty much it I, I i didn't want anything super frilly i didn't want all the extra you know all the extra buttons and stuff guys add to that's fine for hobby rifles but for something i'm gonna be rolling around in the dirt with you know i wanted something as light as mobile as no bs as possible and this was what i came up with and so far so good i haven't found any weak points in it yet that i really other than i would have gone with the longer forend just to just to give me a little more real estate up here it would have been nice so um and i might have gone with a pinned uh 15 and a quarter barrel with the pin flash hider whatever that is to give you the the little shorter but barrel would have been a little bit nicer too but honestly it's fine you know what i mean it, it's fine it runs runs good i have no issues swinging it around corners um and i'm not good enough yet to really be that great at switching shoulders so we'll see how it goes as, as i go from there so but right now that's my setup you know take it for what it's worth i'm just covering up my uh my uh serial number so nobody tries anything silly and uh, I recommend, here's, here's my two cents on this. You know, guys get all butthurt about this stuff whenever, you know, somebody mentions a rifle that's not theirs. Uh, I, I recommend going with, with a solid gun, guys. And, you know, mil spec isn't always mil spec. I mean, I, I would recommend something mil spec through and through. Uh, LaRue's are great. They run awesome. Uh, I love their products. Uh, but they're a little pickier on ammo. They like the higher end ammo, that's for sure. Uh, this thing will run everything from Winchester garbage to the high-end stuff. It doesn't seem to care. It all patterns great. All zero is fine. Um, but the LaRue's are really nice. You know, the uh, BCM stuff's nice. The, the Noveski stuff's nice. Ooh, I got a loose, uh, a loose nut. I got to deal with that. Um, I haven't I haven't maintenanced this in a while, so it needs a little bit of love. But uh, but just, just buy a quality rifle. Just because stuff is, you know, on sale Black Friday for... You know, 349 bucks. You know, fine for the range. I don't know that I trust my life to it. So, just something to consider, guys. And um, be safe out there. And take care.